What's good, YouTube? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a pad sound in this Dead Duck uh, synthesizer or wavetable. I forgot what it's called. Well, this is the one I constructed so you guys can get a feel what we're going for. <laughs> I'm just gonna start from scratch. How do I initialize this? Initialize. Forget that. I'm just pulling a different one. There we are. Alright. I don't know. I'm not about to do a melody, so I'm just pulling in one from the uh, preset bank. Post Malone. Nah, I need something with chords. Nah. Yeah, here we go. Alright, so we got that. And we just got to choose what we want our pad to be made out of. So a sawtooth is going to give you like a lush sound. A square. Let's see what a square would give you. I think I can work with that. So a square is going to give you like a um, 8-bit sound. So let's do that. Alright. We're going to have two squares. You don't have to have two squares, but uh, you can do squares all the way, but I think this one sounds good, so I'm going to work with it. Double click on the parameters to set them back to normal, so this is what we have for, so far, which is just loud. Let me turn this down. Now we're going to detune one of them so they... Um, they don't they're not because right now they're on top of each other and they're playing the same thing so we're gonna have to uh, slightly do detune one so it sounds different than the other one gives it kind of like a chorus effect <laughs> yeah, don't um, push this fine button too too far because um could get out of key. And what could help is raising this detune knob right here. And basically uh, detunes the like each each uh, note of it basically. Even more. It's kinda like this. But it does it does it like a, a different in a different way. I kind of like that. Um, so what we're gonna do with this? I'm not gonna touch this. We're just gonna leave this normal. Kind of, it's, it's like a uh, kind of gives it like a watery feel. Um, let's see what happens if I bring a sub in. It's basically like a lower octave. <laughs> Next, going on to the filter. Basically, it's like an EQ. So low pass, cutting all the lows out. If you turn it to a high pass, cutting all the highs out. Band pass, you're um, selecting a portion in the middle. It's kind of like that lo-fi effect, telephone effect, that's how you get that. I think that sounds cool. Um, let me save this real quick. Let's just save it as pad, whatever. Now what we're gonna do with the attack envelope, uh, basically this, this controls like uh, the fade in. So once the notes start playing, it like how long it takes for it to uh, fade in.
the sustain is basically how, if I press press the note. If I have the sustain all the way up, the as hmm, how can I explain this? When I press the uh, a note on the key, and as soon as I let go, the sound would stop. But if I had the sustain down, and I turn the release up, if I press the note, the sound would ring out a little. Um, let me show you guys. So this is with the sustain on. Stop immediately. Stop. Now if I turn it down and pull the release up, it's going to ring out like an 808. Hold on. Hold on. And a delay. Decay. My bad. There you go. So this is the pad, so we don't want it to, uh, if the sustain is up all the time, it won't give it a, um, it won't. It would just sound too harsh because all the notes will be playing at max volume the whole time. So we're going to have it probably just slightly on there and then it's going to decay out. Let's see. Yeah. All right, perfect. This velocity sensitive knob is more for MIDI keyboards. It's basically um, how sensitive or how hard, how hard you hit the notes on your MIDI keyboard is gonna um, respond with that by uh, making the sound louder. If you hit it more softer, it's gonna be more softer basically. Um, going on to the LFO section, this basically controls these well, pr parameters over here, like for you or automatically. I I'm use I usually uh modulate the uh, cutoff frequency the most to get new sounds. All right, let's see. I have it. Uh, I have L L F one going to the filter cutoff, which is basically it's controlling this. So, god damn it. To activate it, we gotta turn it either to the right or the left. So let's start with the right first. So basically, it's opening the uh, the band pass and, and how fast it's doing it is controlled by by this. And I, I synced it to the tempo so it can, it can be on beat when it's opening and closing it. If I go to two to one, it's gonna be more longer. It's gonna be, it's gonna take longer for it to open. It, more, if I turn it more to the right, it gets more of that airy feel. Let's see what happens if I turn it to the left. That's, that's kind of like a lead sound, no, like a pluck. I'm going to call this a ghost. Yeah. I always save when I get a new sound. I'm gonna have LFO2 control the re resonance, which is basically this knob right here, even though we didn't do anything to it. Well, let's see what happens. The 
these LFO shapes, they um they basically tell the LFO like how aggressive it it uh opens the the um the cutoff frequencies and resonance. So it's sine is like the smoothest one. Triangle it's it's smooth, it's smooth like the sine too. The square is probably the most jagged one, so it'll probably open it, close it, open it rather than the sign. Like gradually open it, gradually closing it. And the sawtooth, it's kinda like the triangle but a little bit more jagged. So probably gradually open it, gradually close it, like quickly. So you you'll have to um experiment with that, but I'll I'll show you. Maybe if we flick through these we'll get a different sound. <laughs> save this pad first that's basically how you make the pad and from here you can uh, add effects you can add effects to it to make it pop out even more but I suggest you do it in this window because then you can save the preset to the Mixcraft um, file see how I got my folder right here I've already saved one. Uh, where'd it go? Oh, yeah. So. Add an EQ. Add a chorus. Add some distortion from here. Nah, this is not the type of distortion. Um, let's go to real bus. a phaser to this to really uh i think the most color effects for pads is like flangers and phasers they're gonna give you the most effects let's go to a preset And then from here, I'll save it as a um, ghost. Oops. Ghost pad. And I'll choose my category, which I already um, 
have the uh, digest folder so it will go there then I can uh, just get it whenever I want so let's click on this to show you guys this is the other one I made Click on back on the ghost one. So that's how you do that. So you can experiment with different, um, basically wave shapes and different filters and LFO cutoff frequencies and all that to get different sounds. I have a whole preset bank coming out. If it's not already out, if I already didn't put it out, because I don't know which order I'm putting these videos out in, so uh, be on the lookout. But um, yeah, that wraps up this video. Follow me on Instagram at I am Dices, SoundCloud at Dices. I'm doing a mix and mastering service, so if you want me to mix and master your songs, I charge thirty. Hit me up in my email. Leave any suggestions below or comments, and I'm out.